Hello and welcome to Hoods, the show that gives you a look at Chicago's neighborhoods. What's cool, new, and interesting. I'm your host, Tara Johnson. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at Andersonville. Sitting next to me is Veronica Robinson, an expert on the area's history. This historically Swedish neighborhood has stayed true to its roots while evolving into an economically thriving town based on independently owned businesses. Once staple of the town's history is the Swedish bakery. Combining history with modern trends is an Andersonville store called Woolly Mammoth. Transistor, a unique electronic store, shows the town's progression into modern day. Over 90 artists come together in the Galleria, a co-op store that puts the artist first. Granola, a booth in the Galleria, focuses on helping poverty-stricken countries. Finally, the Neo Futrarium, a unique Chicago theater, will round out our show. But before we delve into these exciting adventures, we'll take a look at the Andersonville history. Andersonville is a neighborhood in the northern part of Chicago. It started as a farming community in the 1850s. After the fire in Chicago in 1871, they no longer allowed wooden houses to be built within the city limits by the water. So people started moving north, and at that point this was sort of farmland. So a lot of Swedes came from farming areas and moved north, and they didn't really have to move out to the suburbs, so they ended up around this area. But there was some farming, and they could build their own wood houses and also do some more construction. At the turn of the 20th century, more Swedish immigrants came to Chicago. Well, there were a million Swedes that left Sweden between 1870 and 1920. And they settled in different parts of the United States. It's sort of everybody gathers where they have the commonality of their own heritage and people that they know. And that's sort of how the different communities started. And this was the Swedish area, you have the Polish area, you have the Irish area, and this just sort of happened to be the Swedish area. They had schools, they had, and then they started lots of different businesses. The culture and heritage of Andersonville stayed the same until the 1980s. I would say it started changing a little bit more in the 80, mid to late 80s, when there were different businesses moving into the area of different ethnic backgrounds. And today, if you walk up and down the street, you have very few Swedish stores or Swedish businesses. It's more of a mix of everything. But it's kept its uh, focus on being locally owned. So it's, you have very few chain stores. You have Starbucks, you have Pop Bellies, and you have some you know, food-related places. But all the other stores are privately owned and locally owned. In 2004, there was an economic study of Andersonville reported in newspapers across the globe. It stated that the success is due in part to the locally owned businesses. The dollars stay in the neighborhood because if you have your own locally owned business, you have a tendency to go to the store next to you and buy from that store, which then keeps the money in the neighborhood. So it's, we also get a lot of people coming in, obviously from other locations, which I don't think we could survive without that. But it's sort of turning the dollars around in the neighborhood and therefore you can also reinvest in the neighborhood. So whether one is interested in the Swedish culture, unique shops, restaurants, or just wants a good lesson in economics, Andersonville has a little something for everyone. It just makes it the feel of a small town and everybody sort of cares for each other and makes sure that um, the other businesses are thriving just as well as your own business is thriving because we need everybody to come to the neighborhood. We have Veronica Robinson from the Andersonville Swedish American Museum. Veronica, thanks so much for coming out today. Thank you for having me. You know, I'm going to take a little time and ask you a couple of questions about the museum. Yeah. How did it get started? Um, well, the museum was founded in 1976 by a Swedish immigrant uh, named Kurt Mathiasen. Uh, he owned the Swedish restaurant Svea, which is still in operation today. Um, he and his friends decided that they needed uh, sort of a home for the Swedes of Chicago, and so they founded this museum in Andersonville, just a little up the street from our present location. Um, it was about a thousand square feet. 
um, and they got a lot of donations from different people. And then it, in about 1988, they decided they needed a bit more space than 1,000 okay. square feet. So they moved into the present location, which is the old Lind Hardware Store, which opened um, in 1909 originally. It was a Swedish-owned hardware store. Um, and we've been there ever since. So what kind of things can we learn? What can we expect to see at the museum? Um, well, our permanent exhibit is about uh, Swedish immigration to Chicago um, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Um, the Swedes came between 1850 and 1930. 1.2 million Swedes came to the United States. Um, from Sweden, of course, and a lot of them settled in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a bit about leaving Sweden, what you had to pack in your trunk, the journey to America, um, uh, going through Ellis Island, as well as careers, uh, clubs, all kinds of Swedish life in Chicago. And then we also have a rotating gallery okay. down in the first floor, mm -hmm. uh, which about four times a year rotates around. We have uh, contemporary Swedish exhibits there, and our children's museum on the third floor, which is a hands-on area um, where kids can dress up and play through the immigrant experience. So they get to pack a trunk, work on a farm, go on a steamboat, all sorts of fun things. So can they love that. Can adults come to the children's yes. museum? <laughs> yes, sounds most certainly. Pretty good. <laughs> what what else kind? Of, what other kind of children's programming do you have? Or other kind of um, type of program. Well, we do yeah. a lot of school tours okay. um, that come through the museum. Uh, we do lots of kids programming like our uh, breakfast with Tom Ten. We have pancake breakfasts oh. with Santa Claus and with Pippi Longstocking. Oh. Um, we also do, for adults of course, we have mm -hmm. lectures, um, we have uh, musical events, um, all sorts of fun things going on at different times. So. so this museum seems like a real staple in the neighborhood. Yes. Is it um, the type of thing where families come together and view all the exhibits? Yeah, we have, we have a lot of out-of-towners that come in to see the museum, but we also have a lot of local uh, families who live in Andersonville. We do an after-school program called Heysan, um, where kids get to come and they do a craft and have a snack. And so we do a lot working with the neighborhood and with local families. And what's the current exhibits at the museum right now? Um, right now we have uh, Dulce Land Goes West, with it, which is a series of Swedish painters. They made all these little four by four paintings, um, which all hang in rows. It's really kind of neat to see because they are little, uh, slightly different from each other, little sort of plays on the same theme. So. And is the admission to the is there an admission to the museum? Is uh, it? Yeah, there's a suggested donation of three dollars for students and four dollars for adults. Is there any time for students that we could get in for free? Um, every second Tuesday of the month, we do our free day. So Always have to ask for the students. Yeah, you got to have that. <laughs> <laughs> and I've heard there's been some royalty that's come through the halls of the museum. Is that yes, true? Yes, that's definitely true. In 1976 and again in 1988 when they reopened the museum, um, King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia from Sweden came oh. over to help open the museum. So um, they did a whole ceremony and ribbon cutting and all that fun stuff. And Very that was cool. a big event for Andersonville. Oh, yes. It was huge and big for Chicago as well. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for, for sharing all that about You're the museum with us. <laughs> Andersonville has a rich history, and I can't wait to see what else the neighborhood has in store for us. It's time for a tiny commercial break, but when we return, we'll take a look at another historical figure of Andersonville that I think might be one of my favorites, the Swedish bakery. <laughs> so come right back to Hoods. on at Columbia? Don't keep us sitting on a VHS at home. Get it out there. Frequency TV is now looking for student submissions to air all over campus on Chicago's Cable Channel 25, streaming online 24-7 on FrequencyTelevision.com. And it's easy. Step one, all you have to do first is create something that you're passionate about. It can be short films, sketches, music videos, animation, or anything broadcast. Then what? You want people to see it, right? Well then submit it to Frequency. Step one, make. Then step two, submit to Frequency. To submit, just stop by the FTV office on the 14th floor of the 600 South Michigan building or visit us online at FrequencyTelevision.com. Once again, step one, make. Then step two, submit to Frequency. Get your work shown. Visualize yourself on Frequency TV.
welcome back to Hoods, Andersonville edition. We're going to take a look at the Swedish bakery. The bakery has been established since 1929 and has only changed ownership a mere five times. Okay, so. The Swedish Bakery is a historical landmark in the neighborhood of Chicago that offers many different pastries and delights. The warm, friendly atmosphere further exemplifies the bakery's connection with Andersonville. The Swedish Bakery has been in the neighborhood since 1928 or 29. Uh, my family is the fifth owner of it. Uh, at one time, there were probably 13 bakeries in this neighborhood. When I was growing up, there were still eight. Uh, when my parents bought it, they bought it because it was this good business and established and uh, this, you know, uh, thought it was something good to take over. The Swedish Bakery offers a variety of products. Some of the most popular items come from the Swedish culture, including the Swedish cookies and coffee cakes. The Swedish Bakery is also very popular for its decorative cakes. Well, I mean, every bakery in Chicago is different. We're different because we're associated with the ethnic neighborhood of Andersonville, so we have a lot of Swedish products. But, you know, over time we've acquired a lot of other products simply because you have to diversify your product offerings. Uh, so we are mainly a cake shop more than a bakery these days. Uh, very few true bakeries left in Chicago. Andersonville has changed its demographic greatly since the Swedish bakery was first established, from mainly a Swedish culture to a new mix of all kinds of people from all over the world. The bakery is still able to adapt to the changes by adding new European and American products. Basically, our biggest product that we offer is cake and cake slices. That accounts for about half our business. Uh, the rest of our business is composed of cookies, uh, other pastries, traditional bakery items such as coffee cakes, sweet rolls, and breads really account for less than 15% of our business. So we're more, again, a pastry shop than a bakery these days. The Swedish bakery offers something for everyone. The bakery is well known for its special occasion cakes, which include birthdays, weddings, and anniversaries. The bakery sits in the heart of Andersonville at 5348 North Clark Street. You can also check out and order products on their website at www.swedishbakery.com. I don't know about you, but that looked delicious. <laughs> Veronica's still here with me, and we're going to do a little taste testing of some of the delicious things you can find at the Swedish Bakery. I think the first item we have is, um, oh, the droma, huh. the Swedish cookies. These cookies are also called the Swedish dream cookies. I don't know about you, but I can't wait any longer, so <laughs> after you. Thank you. Okay, it's all about the taste. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I can tell you, these delights are lightly vanilla, a sugar cookie, and it does absolutely oh, yeah. melt in your mouth. I'm so sorry. One more bite. It's crumbly delicious. Oh, it's, that's <laughs> great. Now, Veronica, is there anything else you know, in, in the Swedish Andersonville neighborhood, any other type of traditional cookie for the holidays since holidays are coming up? Yeah, there actually is. Um, there's a type of cookie called um, a peppercocker, which is uh, a little, uh, it's like a ginger snap, really. Mm -hmm. um, it's very thin and it's a uh, a ginger cookie and the tradition is to put it in the palm of your hand and then tap it with your finger or thumb. If it breaks into three pieces then your wish will come true if you make a wish. Um, if not then you'll just enjoy eating your cookie in smaller pieces but oh. you know you have the chance. So. And please tell me that cookie tastes like this one because it is absolutely <laughs> <It's> delicious. <laughs> delicious. I can tell you that. <laughs> but we have more. We also have the Swedish blonde cookie. Fitting. <laughs> After you. Thank you. Get it part with the chocolate. Okay, right? yeah, gotta get a part of the chocolate. Mm. Equally delicious. Mm -hmm. I have to say so myself. Now, this treat is one of the many Swedish cookies they offer in Andersonville. It's a shortbread cookie with a raspberry in the middle. And as you can see, half of it is dipped in chocolate, or maybe you can't see that now because mm. I think we ate it. Mm. It sounds like a treat, and it tastes wonderful. 
Oh, okay, one more bite, yeah. I'm sorry. You gotta eat the rest of the chocolate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. mm. And I think we left the best possibly for last. Mm -hmm. There's nothing without a slice of cake. Mm. My goodness, please excuse me, this really is good. <laughs> The, the final item we have is a slice of marzipan cake. I don't know, it's so pretty, I don't even want to eat it. What do you, you, you think? We should <laughs> you just dive right in. All right, I we'll think, just have yeah. to dive right in. Thank okay. You. Just share it off that yeah. plate there. All right. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Mmm. 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 Can I say that again? <laughs> this is an absolutely luscious yellow sponge cake. And as you can see, it has a layer of custard filling and a layer of whipped cream, which is absolutely <laughs> to die. And the final layer is a light green marzipan, which makes this an absolutely wonderful, wonderful, delectable treat. This is actually the kind of cake that we get whenever there's a birthday at the museum. Um, we get the marzipan cake for the birthday almost always. So. Can you add me to that list? Because oh, yeah. this <laughs> we'll put you on. is really absolutely delicious, I have to tell you. I wish we could share this with everyone, but unfortunately we can't. But if you like, I take another bite for everybody. <laughs> I'll take another bite for everybody. Oh, yeah. Have, going to the Swedish bakery, mm -hmm. what other treats do they have? Oh boy, you know, they have such a variety. They have lots of traditional Swedish treats like these, mm -hmm. but they also have things like donuts and brownies. Oh. Um, once I got a cupcake there that was just to die for, chocolate on chocolate with cream oh. filling. Um, looked like one of those little hostess cupcakes, you know. <sighs> so that was great. There you go. The Swedish bakery has been here for quite a long time, and I can understand why it's so <laughs> popular in Andersonville. We're going to go out to another commercial break, but coming back next, our friends from Woolly Mammoth will tell you a little bit about their very unique store. Hi, I'm Taylor Westlake. I'm a graphic design major. And visualize yourself on Frequency TV. My name is John Remo. My major is graphic design. Visualize yourself on. Kurt Cook, film and video, visualize yourself on Frequency TV. Thanks for tuning in to Hoods. I hope I don't have any crumbs on my face. I tried to get everything off. I'm your host, Tara Johnson. Andersonville is home to many interesting places, but none more interesting than Woolly Mammoth. It's a unique store with a unique, unique story. Woolly Mammoth is an antiques, oddities, and resale store, owned and operated by husband and wife artists Adam and Sky Rust. I was really tired of doing what I was doing, the day-to-day -day, uh, hard work that I was putting in. I was doing the carpentry work. Um, and I was just working really hard, breaking my back, doing manual labor. And I come from a family of antiquers, so it's kind of in my blood. My wife and I collect anyway, and I just decided it was time for a change. So kind of on a whim, uh, we just decided to open the shop and see what we could do. 
The store's quirky name is nearly like everything in the store, a reflection of the couple's personal history and creative sense of humor. The area that my husband is from and that we got married in is southwest Wisconsin, and because it was unglaciated, it's called the Driftless Area, and that means that, um, that all the prehistoric animals live there longer, including the woolly mammoth, so some of the last mammoth and mastodon remains were um, exhumed in southwest Wisconsin. And also because we like animals, and so woolly mammoth is a furry animal, but he's also extinct. So just like a lot of these treasures have been forgotten about, we've tried to bring them back to life, just like we're bringing back the woolly mammoth. Now you may be wondering what you can get at woolly mammoth, but the better question is, what can't you get here? There's just so much stuff in here that is, you can't really find anywhere else. Maybe you can find one or two pieces in another shop, but to have all this stuff that's just so strange and out there, all in one little place, and this is a tiny shop. We're talking like, I don't know, five or 600 square feet, and to just fill it from wall to ceiling, floor to ceiling, uh, with all this strange stuff, like here's a possum. The quilts. And here's a freaking steamer that you're supposed to sit in on your head pop up. The pyrography, tramp art, the odd funny things. I mean, where are you gonna find that other than a place like this? You know, and then maybe you could turn on your goat foot lamp next to a mannequin butt. You know, it's just, it's a strange thing. It's a strange place. Strange indeed, but Woolly Mammoth has proven popular among the full range of Andersonville's diverse crowd. Well, that's kind of the beauty about the shop too is we have little kids that come in here and just absolutely freak out and love the shop because there's so much weird stuff that they're into and toys and games. And then, you know, the 20-something hipster crowd likes to come in and buy old records or belt buckles or whatever. And then you get people, you know, I'm, in, I'm 33, so you get people my age coming in uh, and there's clothes, whatever. And then, I mean, we've had people in here that literally take a cab from the nursing home to come over here because we, we have collectibles that, that they're into as well. There's some chocolate and teapots. There's a lot of stuff from the 40s. Some of this old uh, tramp art is, you know, from the 20s and 30s. So it, it really is a multi-generational shop that everybody can appreciate. It's really great. Woolly Mammoth is located at 1513 West Foster Avenue. Their store hours are Monday 1 to 7, Tuesday 3 to 7, and Wednesday through Sunday 11 to 7. Check them out on the web at www.bizglimpse.com slash woolly dash mammoth. Love that music. Wooly Mammoth does seem to have everything. We're going to go for a quick commercial break right now. Coming up is Transistor, an electronic store where the owners just want you to hang out. You won't want to miss that right here on Hoods. Visualize yourself on Frequency TV. Visualize yourself on 